in this presentation I'm going to talk about the major types of sampling methods. To begin with I want to talk about probability sampling. Uh, probability sampling is where we use some form of random selection and where the individuals who are selected to be in your study have a known often equal but not necessarily equal always probability of being selected. Uh, later on uh, we'll also talk about non-probability sampling methods uh, where the selection is not probabilistic uh, it is you know either systematic or just convenience based but it's not necessarily random. So, so before we talk about different types of probability sampling some quick definitions um, we use a capital N to signify the number of cases in the sampling frame. Uh, we discussed what is a sampling frame when we talked about the different groups in a study. We use a small lowercase n to signify the number of cases that are in your sample. The combination formula, again this is simple uh, probability statistics, tells us the number of combinations of the sample that we can select from a sampling frame. Okay? Uh, finally, there is a sampling fraction. The sampling fraction is quite simply uh, the number of cases in your sample divided by the number of cases in your sampling frame. All right. um, now what does all this mean um, and why do we do probability sampling? So at the simplest level, probability sampling basically involves the estimation of the probability of incidence. Right? At the core of probability sampling is our, our, our need to understand or to be able to estimate how probable it was that somebody was selected in our study from the population. If we are not able to estimate that, it is very hard to see or to be able to estimate the precision of our study. So, let me give you an example. Uh, let us say all of us were in COM 205 in a classroom and let us say you know, we had 100 students. Now, let us say 80 students have already showed up, 20 are late, the doors are closed and I am trying to guess if the next student who is going to walk in is going to be male or female. Now, there is two ways I can guess. One is I can just guess and be wrong or I can guess by looking to see how many individuals are there in the class in total, how many males and females and then based on the ratio make what I call what we would call an informed guess. So if we had a 80-20 ratio of females to male I can estimate the probability with which the next individual walking in is likely to be female. If I could not come up with that estimate, the reason I couldn't come up with that estimate is if I did not know what the sampling frame, in this case what the classroom composition is to begin with, then there is no way for me to estimate with precision who is going to walk in next. That in a nutshell is the distinction between any probability based sampling methodology and any non-probability based sampling methodology. For a probability based sampling, we need to be able to estimate the likelihood of incidence of a particular individual or characteristic in our sample. And in order to be able to do that, we need to be able to have the denominator of that equation which is your sampling frame. Um, and so, um, we have different sampling methodologies based on how we make these estimations. Right? So, we are now going to talk about different probability sampling techniques. The starting point to understanding the various techniques is the sampling fraction. So, the sampling fraction quite simply is the size of the sample or the number of cases that you need to draw from your sampling frame. So, let us say we wanted a sample of 100 people and our sampling frame, the phone book or whatever has, let us say phone book or your database has only a thousand names. Right? In other words, you need to draw 10 percent, 100 divided by 1000, 10 percent of 0 0.10 from that sample. How we do this, how we draw our 10 percent of the cases depends on the methodology we choose. We can draw this sample randomly, which is basically by chance where each person has an equal chance of being picked. You can do this, let's say, you know, you can uh, use a ta random number table which is in many statistics textbooks. Uh, you can use Excel uh, to basically run a random uh, equation and just say, you know, randomly pick a hundred names from a thousand. The objective of random sampling is that every individual 
had an equal likelihood, a 50-50 chance, of being in your sample or not being in your sample. It's the simplest way of doing it. Uh, so you could take the phone book, draw a subsample. You can do it in another way. You can draw the sample in a, what is called a stratified manner. A stratified sample is also called a proportional or quota random sampling. Here what we try to do is we try to take the population and we divide it into what we call a strata. A strata is a segment that is non-overlapping. And then within each of these segments, we can do a simple random sampling, right? Um, the strata, the segments, could be income-based, could be race, could be gender, could be education, could be any, any characteristic that we can use because we need that representativeness. So to give you an example, let's say we were doing a poll. So if we were doing a poll of the U.S. population, what happens when we do these polls is if we just randomly start calling people out of the phone book using our simple random sampling methodology, you're going to get a lot more people from the dominant racial groups in the population. So for instance, in the US population, we have a lot more Caucasians. And so the Caucasians are gonna get overrepresented and the smaller groups like African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and so on and so forth will not appear as often by using pure randomness. So what we may wanna do is Go back to the census and say, all right, what percentage of the population is Caucasian? What percent is African American? What percent is Hispanic? We want to get, let's say, and I'm just giving you some broad numbers, 70% of our sample to be Caucasian. I want 20% to be African American and 10% to be Hispanic. So then I set a quota, 70, 20, 10, and then I get 70% and then I sample within that Caucasian group up to and, and make sure that I have 70% of my sample representing it. All right, this creates representativeness and leads to a study and the results which are a lot more representative of the general population. Okay, so this is called stratified random sampling. I'm next gonna talk about systematic random sampling. Systematic random sampling basically has a systematic procedure by which we select the incidence of a individual or a sampling unit in our sample and then there is randomness built into it. Quite simply the procedure takes a population and a decision about the size of the sample you need and a definition of what is called as the interval size. Once we define our interval size we randomly select a number within that interval size and use that to select individuals to be in our sample. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say I asked you to go down the fourth floor of Lockwood Library and pick uh, 200 books that represented all the books that are on that floor. Now there are two ways to do it that we have learned of so far. First is simple random sampling. You just go randomly and start picking up books. Uh, the problem with that procedure is you may ignore books that are, you know, uh, taller or, you know, that you can't reach. Uh, you may ignore heavier books. You may ignore books that you can't see because they're hidden or they're in an aisle that's not illuminated. You could do a stratified random sample. You can say, you know, out of these 200 books, I want 100 books that have to be social science. I want 50 books that have to be, uh, you know, mathematical equations and 10, 50 books that are uh, history books. That's assuming that you can do that. Again, how you pick those 100 books, those 50 each, the randomness with which you do it will be defined by the environment and the limitations of the books, the location, and your own energy. Systematic random sampling is a, is a procedure that works pretty well in these kind of environments. So uh, let's say just for simplicity, there were only 100 books on that floor and you wanted to pick 20 books. What you would do is you would come up with an interval size. Your interval size comes basically by dividing 100 by 20, right? So the interval size is 5. Uh, out of 5, you now randomly choose a number. Now, here's where the randomness comes in. And the random number I choose in this example is 4. I go to every fourth book. Um, that, then I leave another four books, get the next fourth, or every fifth book. Uh, now, the advantage of this is that there is a systematic procedure to it, there is complete coverage, so you've gone from the first aisle all the way to the last. Uh, there's randomness built into it, so you can take every fifth, you can start with four, take every fifth, you can start with four, five, 
uh, four, take every fourth, it doesn't matter. But the point is there is a randomness built in and the probability of selection is estimable. Okay. Uh, the next methodology is cluster sampling, also called area sampling. Here you divide the population into clusters and you randomly sample those clusters. Once you have come up with your random sample of clusters, you select, you measure within all the units in that cluster, in those clusters. Uh, so for instance, um, let's say you're interested uh, in studying, you know, the schools in a region, right? Uh, you have uh, the schools in, let's say, an entire city. You can break the city into, you know, various city blocks, right? Municipal blocks, governance blocks, east, west, north, south, or what have you. And let's say you have, you know, 20 different city blocks in that region. You can randomly select, let's say, five blocks. And within those five blocks, you go to every school and talk to every student within those schools, um, do a survey or what have you within those schools. So this is an example of cluster sampling. Cluster sampling and can also be done in multiple stages, also called what is sometimes called multi-stage sampling, where what you can do is you can take the cluster sampling methodology and you can combine it with single stage methods. Uh, if you want to choose students from different schools in a region to study, you can either select all the schools in a region and then sample the students within those schools. So you select all the schools in let's say you know those 20 city blocks and then you go and do a random sampling of students within let's say five of those schools or you select five random schools and measure all the students within those five schools or you sample the school and sample the students so this gives you the ability to develop or to design a methodology that has randomness built into it but also has adequacy of coverage